Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Null Knives Grace. This is a pre-production sample. I'm going to be going over the differences between the one I have here and the one that you'll actually receive if you pre-ordered this or if you choose to pre-order it. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, the pre-order might still be available. I will make sure that it is linked down below so you can at least go over there and check it out if you want to. Thanks so much to Null Knives for providing this sample for review. This will go back to them when I am done. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is a departure from the other designs from Null Knives, which have both been excellent. <laughs> I very much enjoyed the stuff uh, that has come from Null Knives. But, you know, I say departure, but then again, the other two knives were totally different as well. Uh, this is, once again, something that is, you know, not completely and totally different from everything that we've ever seen, but there's some really interesting elements here that makes this knife stand out versus the sea of, you know, the stuff that we see all the time, right? So, this is a collaboration with Brandon Corbin of Corbin Steel Works, and then Works is spelled W-R-X. Uh, it's based on the Custom Grace, which is a, you know, a design from uh, Mr. Corbin. So this is the first time that, it, as far as I know, that it, it was a collaboration effort through uh, you know, uh, Null Knives. So that's pretty cool. They are manufactured by Rhea. And I want to say this right off the bat. Uh, these are M390, and they are listing them at 60 to 61 Rockwell, which is great. Uh, 60 is about where I say M390 should come in at a bare minimum, and that, that's nice. The 61, I think, is more optimized. But this is much better than, uh, you know, companies who list like, oh, we go 59, 61. 59, you know, in my opinion, and many others, is just too uh, soft for M390 uh, as far as what it's supposed to be optimally heat treated at. It's all, you know, it's, it's definitely opinion based, but it's nice to see that they're they're hitting this at a bare minimum of where people really want it to see. So I'm very happy with that. I want to make sure that that's known right off the bat. Uh, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Overall length of the grace is coming in. It's a pretty loud design. And when I say loud, I mean aesthetically. So Loud knives, I don't know if you guys are like this, but when, when a knife looks real striking, it, it just makes it seem bigger than it actually is. The knife actually comes in at only seven and a quarter inches overall. Blade length is coming in right at three inches on the dot, and your cutting edge is coming in just a hair over. You know, it's about 2.8 inches. Is that right? Yeah, okay, I don't know why I'm second guessing myself. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? and up against the Ontario Rat Model 2. So it's actually, it's way closer to the size of the Rat 2. It's just got, it's just, there's just a lot more going on, absolutely. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? Somewhat close, it's, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, let's put it up against the Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco, I'm sorry, PM2. <laughs> and then the Para 3 is at the bottom, uh, definitely closer to the size of the Para 3. And then last but not least, we'll put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. All right, how's the action on this guy? Uh, I have very much enjoyed, specifically, the action uh, on all, it, you know, there are a lot of great knives made by Riot, but, we see this time and time again, depending on who's sending the information over and how, like Riyadh's execution is great, but the execution does not apply exactly the same to every single design. It depends on the design itself and the information being sent over when they create it. Null knives, oh, their designs translate so well with Riyadh's manufacturing quality. Um, there's a lot of things at play here. Positioning of the thumb stud, the texturing on the thumb stud, the size of the thumb stud, the lock bar access. You know what's funny is some of this stuff is going to be changed for the better. But as it sits, the action is wonderful. The D10 is tuned beautifully. As you can see there, it is ready. You move that lock bar out of the way and it is ready to fall shut. We are running on um, the uh, ceramic bearings and the hardened uh, 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 washers housing the bearings of the caged uh, bearings on the inside. But um, it's wonderful, and the placement of the thumb studs is great. Very easy to do the reverse flick. 
or kick it out this way. Or, you know, if you're, you're, not, you're not feeling fancy or tactical, um, then you can just wheel it out like a normal human being. But the action is wonderful. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's about the same, but we have contouring, which is something I'll always opt for versus the kind of blocky standard, uh, you know, what we like what we're seeing with the Para 3. It's fine, but the contouring's better. Length and height, not a, you know, not anything that's super loud in the pocket. Maximum height still cleared by the pair of three. And lengthwise, it's honestly almost exactly the same. So this really shouldn't bother too many people in the pocket. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel or the pinned comment. Um, I believe he did T8 throughout, which is great. This is a uh, captive pivot. I think he says three-piece captive titanium. Well, it's a, a steel pivot barrel. But yeah, I believe I read the notes there that the pivot is captive, so that's nice. Um, but T8 across the board, and it's hidden on this side, which I love. It minimizes the uh, total number of fasteners, which is the, 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 the fewer the better. Um, just makes it simpler for um, disassembly. Uh, and then you get to enjoy the aesthetic of this side without seeing the screw heads. So that's great. I have no complaints there. I think that's wonderful. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here real quick. Whoops. Blade stock. Come on. There we go. Blade stock thickness of the gray is coming in at 125 thousandths. It's about what I expected. There is. Let's take a look here. Oh, there's on this on this pre-production sample, there is no internal milling. But if you look on the website, it says that he plans to add internal milling in the final runs of these, which is great. This is not necessarily a, a super heavy knife as it sits. We're looking at, in this case, titanium, carbon fiber, and M390. The standard versions of this knife will not have inlays. It's just titanium. They cost a little bit less. Uh, we'll talk about all the pricing here in a bit. But they will weigh a little bit more right? when you compare because of this pocket that's milled for the carbon fiber and the carbon fiber weighs a little bit less, right? So this one weighs in at 3.92 ounces, which is not a perfect value for you. If we go like, you know, an ounce of weight per inch of blade, if we consider that a perfect ratio, you don't have to go by that. But that's that's kind of what I go by. It's what a lot of people go by. Um, the internal milling will reduce that probably to about 3.6, 3.7, right? Maybe even three and a half ounces. It's going to make the ratios better. As it is right now, it's balanced pretty close to the pivot. <laughs> um, if we, you know, reduce the weight a little bit, the balance will be even better. But that'll come back a little bit for full titanium models, right? Um, anyways, I think we can go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Look at this Tanto. The secondary, right, this this uh, this edge here is longer than the initial uh, cutting bevel or cutting edge. And normally we don't see that. We see this elongated and then a short end, right? This is yeah, sort of an American tanto. The uh, final production versions will actually have this edge rounded a bit. Boy, that's sharp. i got to keep my finger back. And you can see pictures of this on uh it's not aggressive it's it's subtle you can see pictures of this on the website i think it looks better that way so i think that's cool that he's gonna do that but we're still gonna have the short edge here and the long edge here does this add any advantage in day-to-day -day use not not something that is universally measurable right i mean this blade is is cool because it just has that hyper aggressive look with this edge being so long we have a hollow ground initially and man that is crazy hollow. I mean, it really does get nice and thin down here. This edge up here is a little thicker because it's going to be flat ground. It's going to, I mean, it's still going to be flat ground in the uh, final production version, but yeah, the edge right here initially is very sharp. The downside to a Tanto is if you're going to resharpen it, you are going to be uh, sharpening this edge and then adjusting and, a sharp and sharpening this edge, which means this little edge this little point right here is going to gradually get, unless you are like a master sharpener, which I'm not, the vast majority of people are not, right? You can raise your hand in the comments if you're a master sharpener and you're able to maintain a perfect tanto edge right good for you. Most people are not going to be able to do that. So if you can, if you plan on using this and resharpening it over time, that little angle is going to get rounded off, which some people are bothered by and some people are just not going to care. I, mean, I would venture to guess that the people who are planning to buy this and use it are not going to care, right? So whatever. Um, the, uh, the upside is that you have two completely different edges and this is a short edge 
still plenty of edge. I mean, you know, if we want to talk about what it's capable of in a utility sense, it's the same amount of cutting edge that you would get from a utility razor, right? Just a regular razor blade. Uh, it's like an inch, right? So you'll have the initial, you know, I guess you'd call that the slice of more like push it in here. And then you have this very long edge up here, which you can use for scraping or whatever, right? It, truthfully, a simple drop point blade is always going to be more utilitarian. But, you know, the, I think the people who pick this up, the people who are going to be interested in it are knife enthusiasts, right? I mean, you carry uh, these types of tools not just for utility, but because they're fun and interesting to you. And they're also conversation piece, uh, pieces amongst uh, other knife enthusiasts, right? There is a flat that extends, I don't know, 65 70, eh, 60, 60 percent the length of the blade. We have a, a large swedge, um, nice, uh, just all of the different areas here. The swedge, uh, this, uh, the, the flat grind of the, um, you know, the secondary uh, grind of second angle, right? And then the hollow grind here. It, it's just nice. Everything looks good. Um, ergonomically, it is comfortable. It doesn't look like it. This isn't like absolutely masterful. Like, oh my gosh, my hands just melt into it, right? We have a really long pocket clip. I, I can never understand why designers want to do such a long clip. The nice thing about this is that it is a milled clip and it's we've got uh, contouring on the top, radius radius top, right? So it's nice and, and rounded, it's, it's wide enough. There's no real sharp edges or anything. So when you grip it, it's not an uncomfortable feeling, but you're definitely met with this sort of, wow, there's the pocket clip. I can definitely feel it because it's, you know, it's sort of the, the end of the clip is like way up here. I don't think we needed such a long clip, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't like make the knife uncomfortable to use. The rest of the ergonomic lines are good. Again, like I said, it's not like oh my gosh, I, it's like I'm just holding something that's perfectly molded to my hand. But it is comfortable because all the edges are nicely knocked down. This is chamfer. Or I'm sorry, there's chamfering here, and then it's contoured here. Right? There's no sharp areas anywhere except for the edge of the blade. The inlay work, as is usually the case with Riot produced knives, is perfection. The transition from the titanium to the inlay is almost imperceivable. It's it's just super, just perfect and smooth. The carbon fiber looks fantastic. I love that the inlay position, I think, looks fantastic. Something else he did that I, I, I appreciate is that his logo is down here. Some people aren't going to like that. I would rather have it here than on the blade. The blade is just the blade. You get to enjoy it, right? You can see uh, the Corbin Steelworks WRX, if you're wondering how to uh, spell that, uh, is, is over here. It's the same kind of thing. They put it on the frame. I think they did it in a way that makes it look more classy. I think it would have just been poopy to have the Knoll Knives thing up here and the Corbin. Like, there's just so much printing on the blade. It just would have bothered me, right? Um, I think it's important to point out that the lock bar access as it sits is pretty darn good, but he apparently plans to, I'm looking at my notes to make sure that that's actually correct. Yeah, he actually plans to extend the lock bar access, making it even easier. This is typical of null knives. Like all of the adjustments he plans to make are, it, it's all stuff that I, you know, sometimes would, would you know, critique. And it's funny, this has happened with two of the other, you know, the production samples he sent is like, it, it felt really, really good. And there were just a couple of minor things. And then his notes were like, I'm going to correct these before you even say anything, I'm going to correct these and I'm going to make these other adjustments that will make the whole thing better. And I'm like, I, I wouldn't even have considered that. So it's, he's always, he's always quite a ways ahead of the people who are going to be reviewing his stuff. And I honestly, I like that, right? It allows me to share the information more easily with you. And it just, it tells me that he's really, really into what he's doing and he very much cares about the designs. So better lock bar access. There's going to be internal milling add to this thing. We're going to have a rounded secondary edge here, slightly rounded secondary edge. He's going to shorten the detent ramp, um, which is going to make for a slightly quicker disengagement. As it sits, it's fine, but it'll only make it better if he does that, right? There's no double clutch or anything like that. As you can see, drops down to the thumb. Uh, and then the jimping back here, which is pretty short. I'm really happy that he said he was going to extend that a little bit. I think that's nice. Uh, so the jimping is going to be um, extended. And as far as changes go, uh, ran a tanto extended jimping, better lock bar access, shortened detent ramp, and more internal. Yeah, that's everything. Um, so all those changes I think are going to be for the better. I think there's a few different finishes few different combinations of things. The standard version of this knife is just going to be titanium. 
something I found interesting. It was mentioned more than once uh, in slightly different wording, but it was the same thing, which tells me that they really meant it. They're listing these blades as hand ground. Now, depending on exactly what they mean by that, that makes a huge difference. Uh, a machine ground blade doesn't take nearly as long as a hand ground blade. This grind looks really, really perfect to me. Like so perfect that it's machine ground. Do they mean that the final edge is done by hand or they mean the entire, either way, even if the edge is just done by hand, uh, that's, that's quite a bit of extra work, right? It's quite a bit in terms of labor cost, right? Uh, but the entire blade, Whatever they mean by that, you know, that's important. If that's if that's really the case, that's pretty cool. It's, it's dramatically more impressive if the entire blade is hand ground, but there's just, it's so perfect. I mean, my God, <laughs> that's amazing. I don't, I don't know, that's, I don't know exactly what they mean by that. I'm hoping that they, you know, if they at least mean that the edge is put on by hand, still very impressive, imp impressive impressive and it's something that you should take note of definitely if Noel knives is watching uh, it would be nice for a little bit of clarification in the uh, uh the comment section i probably should have i probably have reached out to him before the video um but uh uh yeah it, it's it's something that i noticed on the website that i thought wow uh that's that's really interesting there um, let's see here. There is a lanyard hole on the backspacer, which is floating. That's cool. I like that. Looks really neat. So people who like lanyards, you've still got a spot for the lanyard position. The pocket clip, I think is fine. Uh, it's not super duper deep, but it's not what I'd call shallow. That's all that's going to be sticking up out of your pocket in and out of the pocket should be pretty easy. Thanks to a nice lift off the initial contact from the surface of the uh, inlay. In and out of the pocket, super easy, right? It's got enough retention. I love the mill titanium clips. I think they're just better all the way around versus the stamp steel clips or the ones that have the sweeping bills, right? I like these inlay versions better because the entirety of the lock bar is not exposed and you can kind of put your hands where you want where you deploy it. But the presence of the detent ball ramp means that even on the exposed frame lock versions, you could put quite a bit of pressure on that lock bar and it's still going to fly, right? So it's not necessarily like, you know, there's this dramatic difference. When it's lipped and the ball's like getting over a lip on the, you know, steel tang face of the blade, then the overlay versions are dramatically better because excess pressure on an exposed lock bar can make it to where the knife won't deploy until you release it, right? In this case, though... Um, it's really, it's less of like a uh, utilitarian benefit and more of like a do you want carbon fiber on your knife, right? I appreciate it either way, but, you know, I saw the pictures of the detent ramp and have handled his knives in the past, and it just, it seems to not really matter. In fact, let's see if I can do this. I'm just going to put pressure on that lock bar. Yeah, <laughs> I'm left-handed pushing down on the lock bar with my thumb, right? It doesn't matter. So he's going to extend that, or I'm sorry, he's going to shorten that ramp a little bit, but there's still the, the ramp is there. I keep saying extend. He's going to shorten that detent ramp, um, but the ramp is still going to be there. So it should be very easy to deploy either way. Lockout on this guy. I don't think, did we cover everything? I don't think we talked. It's got a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, but you know, the inlay versions have a secondary over travel. Um, the that they act as that, right? But the exposed frame lock versions will still have the over travel. You can just barely see the lip in there from the lock bar insert. So either way, we're good. Lockup percentage is coming in at 40% uh, or so. We can check that back here. Contact mark, that's maybe 50%, which is great. Uh, no blade play up, down, left to right. Absolutely no lock stick whatsoever. No pivot lash, extremely smooth. I don't know what it is about these. It's just really only the, these designs from null knives are just super smooth. Detent click, great. And on this, which has been around to I maybe, maybe a couple of people, it looks pretty darn centered to me. I would venture to guess that the final production versions will be absolute. I mean, it could be, you know, if it is slightly off, it's hard to tell. A slight adjustment of the pivot should be good, but Riot knives, typically, they come perfect. Uh, and if they do come off center while you're using them, you just readjust the pivot or add some Loctite, right? So, 
Um, what do I think about this? Really, the only thing that he's not going to change that I wish he would is just the overall length of the pocket clip. I don't think pocket clips need to be this long. I think you could reduce it by 33% and still have a clip that looks good, goes with the design, functions exactly the same. And it's just less of a, I don't want to call it a hot spot. It's just less of a presence when you're gripping the thing really, really hard. Uh, the best thing about this knife, I think, is absolutely the blade. It's just such an aggressive looking Tanto. If you're not into Tantos, right, then this is just not going to be for you. The overall build quality and design is great. It's easy to manipulate, but that blade, I think, is going to be the main reason that people pick it up. Um, the uh, if, if the edge is hand sharpened, I think it's worth a little bit of a, hey, that's kind of cool. Or if the whole blade is hand ground, like, that's a big freak. That's a huge deal. That's way more time. But... As it sits, general competition and just adding in, you know, if we're just assuming at least the final edge is done by hand. Uh, the base price of these at 325 bucks, given all of the attention to detail here. And again, this is a big deal. These are manufactured and executed by Riot. And it's a design from two people who clearly very much care about all the teeny tiny little details. We have a milled clip, we have a milled backspacer, we have premium materials all the way around. 325 bucks for the standard version, which is just an exposed frame lock, is not bad, right? I mean, we're, think about like what the Chavez 229 ran, a lot of other, you know, much more basic designs from around. Not that I don't like the Chavez 229, I do, but it is absolutely a more basic design. I think with less, it's gonna have less machine time versus something like this. Uh, so I don't think 325 is bad. You'll pay another 90 bucks to have the carbon fiber inlays. I think this version of it looks the best, but it's really hard for me to justify an additional $90 for the carbon fiber inlays. So I think the best bet, especially considering that you're not going to be faced with additional difficulties deploying the thing because it's an exposed frame lock because of that detent ramp. I think the best deal is absolutely the base version, 325 bucks. If you want some of the more spicy versions, then they've got them there. You can really make these things. I think they've got like Zerkatai extras. They've got super crazy extra whatever, right? There's a bunch of different versions. My car to inlay this or that. But the base version of 325, I think, is fine. It's good to go. This is a fun one. It's not going to be for everybody because of the blade shape, right? This is not a knife that was designed to appeal to everybody. It was designed to appeal to certain people, right? So if you're going to go for it, 325 is the way to go, and I think that's a reasonable price. It doesn't blow my socks off, but it's reasonable, and it's fairly competitive, right? Again, we're not talking, oh, I could get carbon fiber and titanium and M390 for less. Yeah, you're just talking about the materials. You're totally throwing the execution and the design and the work involved out the window, right? It's like just taking tires and metal and paint and glass and all the other things that a car is made out of and being like, well, I can get these materials on a, on a different car for way less than I can a Lamborghini. Yeah, but it's not made the same way, right? It's not, it's not the same at all, right? Even if it is, even, even, even if it is all made out of exactly the same thing as a Lamborghini, right? The process and the execution of all of this stuff is very, very different, right? I'm not saying that this is necessarily a perfect correlation to a Lamborghini in the knife world, right? But that's why the whole like materials equal value thing is just out of nonsense, it's out the window, right? Uh, quality varies from knife to knife. Um, I think the 325 is justified for people who like the short, aggressive Tanto uh, and are looking for uh, quality that you can find, um, you know, in knives like the, the Null Knives designs. So, and and of course, this actually was not designed. This was designed by uh, uh, Brandon Corbin, right? I keep I keep saying Null Knives designs, but um, uh, this is a collaborative effort, and the original was. Brandon Corbin. That's it's based on his custom, right? But they tweaked it together and then, you know, had Riot produce it. And I think the final product is very good. That's going to be pretty much it for today. Uh, thanks again to Null Knives uh, and Brandon Corbin for supplying this knife for review. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.